it's finally here. After 14 years of the 200 series Land Cruiser, is this new Toyota Land Cruiser 300 a big enough step forward? The all-new 2022 Toyota Land Cruiser 300 series. It's the most highly anticipated car of the year and the next chapter in the story of the Land Cruiser lineage. There isn't another model with the same kind of respect and loyalty in Australia, with an enviable reputation that dates back to the Land Cruiser's first arrival in 1963. On the flip side of that, there are no bigger boots to fill than those of the incumbent Land Cruiser. It's a vehicle that Toyota pins much of its success on. Not just in Australia, where the Land Cruiser first cut its teeth, but around the world. Those waiting for the new Land Cruiser have been patient. The 200 series has been steadfastly serving as Toyota's flagship off-roader for almost 15 years. And while it has finally arrived, the bad news is that stymied production capabilities mean the size of the waiting list for the 300 series will also be quite legendary. And in a world of increasingly urban usage, tighter emissions requirements and ever-evolving customer demands, the basic recipe of the classically simple turbo-diesel Toyota Land Cruiser is under fire. Being big, tough, comfy and capable isn't good enough anymore. And while previous generations of the Land Cruiser had some of the most reliable powertrains, the modern requirements of a diesel engine mean those days of mechanical simplicity are a thing of the past. While the 300 series Land Cruiser is literally new from the ground up, much of the design has gone by unchanged. Key markers like length, width, height and wheelbase carry over from the 200 series Land Cruiser. And even if the latter chassis remains underneath with similar suspension designs, this is the first example of Toyota's new Georgia F body on frame architecture. That new platform, shared with the 2022 Toyota Tundra, teams up with aluminium panels to shave around 90 kilograms from the curb weight of the 300 series Land Cruiser. The new powertrain is lighter as well, lower slung and mounted further backward in the chassis. This means the center of gravity is improved. And with lower weights, the payload of the Land Cruiser 300 series has been improved a little. The lower curb weight has been joined by a slightly lower gross vehicle mass GVM, but payloads have been moderately improved. One thing that can't be escaped is the increase in price. Whereas the 200 series Land Cruiser started from $80,873 before on-road costs, that opening price has crept up by nearly $10,000. The GXL, usually seen as the volume seller of the range, has broken into six figures at $101,790 before on-road costs. <laughs> 